The year is 1999. Season 5 of Thomas and Friends is airing. The Matrix and the Return of Star Wars would come out that year. Your computer looks like this, and with everything else that's happened this year, this Windows 98 game made by Mind's Eye Productions would forever set the bar for Thomas and Friends video games. Hold on, let me fix this. What the? Oh gosh darn it, why am I stuck in freaking Windows 98? The studio, known for combat chess, a game so good that GameSpot said, The definition of novelty is something new and unusual. Once it stops being new, the enjoyment of it quickly fades, which is exactly what happens with combat chess. This game was a game that brought everyone together to agree that it was so mid. Combat Chess was uploaded to Steam in 2021, by the way. You can just buy this game today, which is exactly what I did. If I'm to understand how this studio would end up making the best Thomas games, I need to see their earliest works. Okay, that's a neat animation. It's slow. Yeah, real slow. Okay, there we go. Alright, what are we doing? Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. I don't know how to play chess. It's unknown how this studio had become trusted to make these Thomas games, but I'm genuinely so glad that they did. No studio should care about a preschool property children's game, but for some reason, Mind's Eye Productions took tons of respect to the Thomas and Friends franchise and just put it all into these games. So let's get into the first game that they ever did. Festival Adventure would release as the first game in the trilogy. And as the first installment, yeah, it's very okay. Visually, it's great. Okay, it's great for 1999. I'm that type of person to pull out an obscure PS1 game and talk about why the graphics are just beautiful and a masterpiece. Even with the visuals being dated, I like how they feel like the show. They even take advantage of it being CGI, like having Topham be fully animated and having the camera follow the engines that could only be possible in 3D. But they still keep that style to Thomas. There is no mouth in animation, the human character's eyes don't move, they use the classic series music, and so many camera angles of the cutscenes are something that the model series could do. A lot of care was put into the feel of the cutscenes to have the experience of playing through an episode of the show. The story itself is kind of just weird. The first cutscene in the entire game has Topham tell the engines it's festival day. Then after the introduction to the game part of it, we get to see the day where Thomas, Percy, and Gordon are all at Tin Sheds. All dirty for some reason. After they're clean, Gordon has to use a turntable, but the wind picks up and he gets stuck spinning. Thomas goes to do his job, it cuts to him getting water, and then they go to the docks, and then Thomas pulls his trucks out of the docks, and to then have Annie and Clarabelle out of nowhere, making all of the work at, you did at the docks feel like a time waster? Thomas collects his passengers and goes to race Harold, for Thomas, for some reason, to mid-race stop and watch Terrence put cows back in their pen. Then when Thomas arrives, at the festival before Harold does, which you would think they would bring this whole race plot back into the plot, but they completely drop it. I don't need to explain the rest of the story, because you all can see the issues with this. None of the story feels like a natural progression. It feels like random cutscenes are very loosely connected together. Also, we are told by the game that the festival is something that's a really big, important event the entire time, but we get to know nothing about it. And by the time we get to build, it's so uneventful and nothing. This is a big part of the game. It's in the title, and yet it doesn't matter. Right after you build the festival, you get this unrelated cutscene with Edward having two trucks push him down a hill, causing him to hit a rock really hard. Why do two trucks make Edward crash? He just looks weak. Thomas just leaves him for no reason too. Like, what, what a jerk. But then after you get to have the band play the Thomas theme at the festival, that's it. It's just a cutscene place, and Toby tells Topham Thomas was busy taking passengers home from the festival. And then after that, it ends. Topham says that the festival was a great success. Nothing is great about the festival, and the story doesn't even feel like you're going on an adventure. This game really suffers from being a really good idea, but they didn't do a good job with it. But how's the gameplay? <laughs> the gameplay's boring. 
The way the game works is once a cutscene is done playing, you get to play a mini game. When you can play it once, you get to go on to the next cutscene or you get to play it again but a little harder. The first game has you basically do an introduction where you can't even skip to go on to the next cutscene after watching one engine. They introduce you to this in a very terrible way. This is a big part of the mini games. It's how you even get this cool little thing on the wall for saying that you completed the game. But this is a terrible tutorial because how would you even know? Once you beat a mini game, you probably want to go to the next cutscene. So most kids probably had no idea why all their progress they just did went away. It also doesn't help that these games are really just boring. You do what it tells you to do and then that's it. There isn't anything fun to click on and doing the same game three times but just slightly harder must have been really boring to kids at the time. It also makes the feeling of finishing a minigame go away since you have to do it again. Like for Terrence for example. Imagine being him after you put the cows away for the first time. Then they get out again. Then by the third time, Terrence must just be done with it because each time is made more difficult for him. I do like the reward you get for getting every mini game done. You get on Topham's office, you get a print on a photo saying you won. Also here we can find the coloring photos to print out and character cards to read. Most of them are good, with some of them being a weird description, like Gordon being referred to as elderly. It's not entirely wrong, but I think elderly would be with Toby and Edward. Gordon is more in the middle of his life. Also it says that Henry is prone to illness but he's in his new shape, which means that he shouldn't be ill anymore. Besides of some of this not being super accurate, they're nice to have. Also something nice to have is Tim and Shed's having doors at the back so engines can run through the sheds. It's really cool to watch, and I know this isn't gameplay, but I, I just think it's cool. Sadly for this game, the gameplay is just really lacking from other point and click games of the era, with the gameplay not all matching with the pace of the story and vice versa. It's hard to really care about this game game because of how weird it is. Who cares about this game for doing something weird and experimental when the sequel comes out next year? When I say Trouble on the Tracks is the best Thomas the Tank Engines and Friends game, I mean it. This game is what the Great Festival Adventure wishes it could be. I just finished talking about how mediocre the first game was, so your faith in this game being good is probably low, but get rid of that hate. I don't want it here. What I want is to show you how good this game actually is. The biggest appeal of Trouble on the Tracks is its story. The story of Trouble on the Tracks is pretty fun. There's a coal shortage on the island of Sodor, and there is only enough coal for a single engine. I guess the diesel engines were busy because they can't go and get it, so Topham has James use all the available coal left to could get more coal from the mine. James goes incredibly fast to get the coal there on time, but he ends up not being able to stop and crashes. When they hear nothing from James, Harold is sent back to look for James. Something really cool about the game's soundtrack is that the cutscenes they use the Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell themes, but when the game starts they use their own music they made for these games. They did a remix of James's theme. <laughs> One for Harold that is absolutely amazing. And more with all of it really fitting the game. Back to the story, Harold ends up finding James, which I must imagine James feels terrible right now. Could you send the breakdown train to get him back on the rails again? But none of the engines have any coal. What can we do? Well, you got Boko, Daisy, Diesel sometimes. Oh, they got Lori 1. Now, some of you might be upset with a Lori returning, but I actually like it for this game. The Lori is nowhere near as bad as they were in the episode, and he's just grumpy. It kind of feels like a natural progression of the character. He doesn't even want to go to the mine and go get coal and only does it because he has to. A great part about this game is that during the gameplay, characters interact with Topham. So while all of this work is being done, he's just complaining to Topham the entire time. It's great. Because of Lori One's help, the engines can get back to work and Thomas goes to save James. He brings him back to Timmy Sheds in this season one-esque scene. We're gonna see that Thomas has a clone? Wait a minute! Is that the great tank engine and Thomas is 
driver's house and Thomas goes to school. Do we finally get lore drop? No, it's just an error, but it would have been cool. The rest of the story is all about getting the right parts to help fix James. We get a whistle, organize some boxes, and we even get him this new lamp. Once we fix James, we get to see him, and I like how this lamp that we gave him is actually used for the cutscenes. Well, some because the animators kind of forgot he had a new one. Then to end the game, we get to fill him up with some coal and water. Thanks too full. What the? How, how does this guy get in here? Does he need help? He seems to be fine, but I'm unsure. But once we put Cole in James's firebox and drive him for a little bit, the game ends. But for the end of the story, we actually have to quit the game. This is a nice choice because once you have finished with the game, before it ends, you can watch this cutscene. And it just nicely wraps up all that you've accomplished. James learns his lesson and never wants to have another accident again. It's a really good story, perfect for this game. The story is the main reason I recommend this game because while you could watch all of it on YouTube, playing through it and watching everything you do progress the story is just really fun. The graphics were impressive for the time and I don't think they look all that dated in comparison to other 3D games of that era. Plus the animation is pretty good for early 3D games. I can see why Combat Chess, everyone loved the animations for that because with this game, I just think they all look good. Except for that crash, that was a little bit weird. I bet most of you don't want to set up a Windows 98 emulator, but for those of you who do, I doubt you'll regret it. Oh yeah, I forgot about the gameplay! I love the first mini game. It's not hard at all. It's a good introduction. You get to fly Harold around the island for where James crashed. And this is where Topham introduces you to the best feature of the game, the difficulty slider. This makes the game really fun. We can have a Thomas game with a little bit more of a challenge. Giving the player a choice of how difficult they want their experience for little kids is really fun. Now this isn't anywhere near as hard for games above the age of a small child level, but it's really good. You also have a reason to play at a higher difficulty, and that's to have a certificate on the wall that says you beat it at the highest difficulty. But that's not all that they added. They added a more traditional like point and click game system, where if you click parts of the environment, they are all interactive. And these elements for the game make it feel alive and less like a video game. The games themselves I find to be fun for a kid's game. They don't take too long, they progress the story, and most importantly, they are fun. Unless you play the cranky game and you get lost. Overall, the games are well done, and with all the things that are click on them, it's a really fun time waster. So that's Trouble in the Track. All these games have a US and UK dub, by the way. With the US dub having Robin Smith doing all the voices. Hooray! And for the UK dub, we got Michael Angelis. <laughs> I really love Robin Smith's narration for these games, but having Michael Angelis as a narrator for these games made these feel way more like an actual episode. For the first game, I made sure to use Robin Smith's narration, and for the others, I got Michael Angelis, and for Railway Adventures, you'll see why I got him. In trilogies of games, they usually tend to go like this. The first game was a good start. The second game took everything from the first game, but innovated on it. And the third game was the most experimental. 2001 was the year we got the Best of Thomas DVD that had a demo of the Great Fezzle Adventure, and it's just the first game where you got to play three times, and then advertisements. Now unlike the first two where they were basically the same game with improvements, with the sequel Railway Adventures, it does something entirely new. They made this big controller for you to put on your keyboard, but I don't have that, which lucky for me because they let you use your mouse on the right side to control it, or that you use the keys on the keyboard, which is what I did. This game has a really big map for you to go around and explore. We have the main area near Topham with four mini games to complete. These are all pretty interesting. I like this landside one where you have to work with Toby, James, Harold, and Crinky to repair the bridge for Percy. Now I'm off to deliver my coal. Goodbye. Goodbye, Percy. The others are good as well. There is this fetch quest-like game where you have to go and get a person for Caroline, a fuel tanker for Harold, and a coal truck for the lorry. I guess he's just stuck with that job now. We have a game where we drive people to the stations in a missing mail truck game. Mail truck was stolen by Diesel? So he does exist in these games. They even gave him a 3D model that is only used for photos. Not even a cutscene. That's kind of sad. This game is kind of weird from going from Trouble in the Tracks. The intro cutscene for the game makes you feel like, oh yeah, this is going to be like a story focused one just like Trouble in the Tracks was. But it's really the only animated cutscene in the entire game besides the end cutscene where Thomas goes into his shed and you leave the game. Also for this game, you could tell that they either didn't have enough time to finish the game within a year or the budget. So it went into making the map as big as possible because these cutscenes 
are just a huge downgrade. Most of them are just things at the ends of mini games, and they're just images with the characters talking and their eyes moving. This game does a really cool thing for the UK dub, and that's having a lot of voice actors for the other characters. Pretty much every other character besides Thomas is voiced by someone who isn't Michelangelo's. I think that these voices work for the most part like Birdie. I always like driving my passengers around the island. But a lot of them can suffer from early video game voice acting like Henry. I've been taking passengers around the island, Thomas. And now I'm so tired that I need a little rest. I'd better leave. A weird thing with the characters in this game is while there are the most amount of characters in one of these games, they don't feel that well used. The main cast is fine, but they don't really add anything. It very much feels like a Thomas-focused story, and then all these characters are just kind of there. Percy tells Thomas that he's a small engine a lot, which shouldn't come from Percy, the small engine. I'll be pulling the coaches when some very important visitors come to see the island. I'm sure he wouldn't give such a special job to a little blue engine like you, Thomas. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about the game's map. That's kind of the big appeal of this. It's a really fun concept. You can go around the map and you find these fun surprise things and they have Thomas narrate clips from the series. Then you can go and find mini games to play. We get to race Birdie, get Toby out of a maze he somehow got himself into, get these troublesome trucks out from hiding in the diesel mini game that had a nice amount of build up surprisingly. Since he stole the mail trucks, when you go find the trail of letters leading to it, you complete the mini game, but you wonder where in the world is diesel? So when you go and find the mini game, it's fun to see him, though the game itself is not that fun and a letdown. He just throws bags of mail, and that's it. But my main problem with the game is that NOBODY WILL FREAKING SHUT UP! There cannot be a single moment of silence in this game, and I get extremely tired hearing of Michael Angelus's Thomas voice over and over, telling me what to do all the time and to hurry up when I know about all of these things by now. Besides the game not delivering on cutscenes or having too much talking or even letting me down with the Diesel game, I still find this game to be pretty fun. The freedom to just drive around the map is really fun. And getting to see Coldyfell Station in an official Thomas and Friends game is something I'll forever appreciate. The scenery with all the mountains around the map too, while it's really dated even for the time, I imagine that this gets a pass because of how big the rest of the map is. I'm glad this game was released. If it was a sequel like Trouble on the Tracks instead, I'd probably like this a little bit more because of the focus on its story, but this game really wanted to focus on the gameplay, and for that I think it did a really good job of making it fun and unlike any other Thomas game. Railway Adventures is definitely the experimental child of the entire trilogy, but it has a lot of really interesting stuff for the entire game where its shortcomings can be ignored because of how innovative it was. Well, that is it for the entire Thomas and Friends Mind's Eye Productions trilogy. The studio made a brand new game three years in a row. They did a good job with them all, while also making the best official Thomas games ever made. They've made a lot of progress since Combat Chess, but in 2005, Disney would buy up Mind's Eye Productions, and now the studio makes absolutely nothing. Unless they do, but I actually couldn't find anything that they do anything or even exist anymore, but I doubt they do. Because, have you heard of Mind's Eye Productions recently? No, you haven't. It's been more than 20 years since the start of this trilogy. And for games that are 20 years old by now, I really think they did a great job with them. And I am grateful for what we got out of this studio. Now, I really need to get out of this Windows 98 uh, computer. Uh, so hopefully, that'll be fixed uh, by the next time I talk about stuff. Alright, bye!